I want to welcome everyone uh, to this 10th anniversary Molecular Foundry event. Um, and uh, I'm really pleased to see you all here, this terrific crowd of, of really distinguished visitors, members of staff, and our users, um, leaders from, from uh, Congress, from, uh, from the, the lab, uh, and from the scientific communities that are just so well, well represented by the Molecular Foundry. So it's, uh, it's terrific to see you all here. So 10 years ago, uh, on March 24, 2006, the Foundry Building was dedicated. Uh, so the Molecular Foundry Building uh, came up, uh, and it's on the other side of the lab. Um, and, uh, and we're here really to celebrate that uh, today, that dedication. So we uh, started with a few uh, staff scientists uh, that were hired by a number of our founding directors who are here today. Uh, we'll get a chance to introduce them. Uh, and now we're kind of at a point uh, where uh, we're pretty much full throttle and really having a tremendous impact. Uh, and I think the, the, the program that you, that's been put together here is a testament to that, a really strong program of uh, exciting science uh, that you'll be hearing about. Uh, and so, and actually I think over the course of the day you're gonna hear uh, a little bit about, you know, some of the work we've done in that, those early days that's now led to a significant impact and, uh, kind of new science today. Um, you'll hear about the current state of the art, and we'll get a glimpse of the future um, as well. Uh, I want you to just take a moment, um, and if you have been in this room before, uh, it always has this beautiful artwork uh, from, you know, all over LBL. Uh, and um, today, we kind of swapped it out, and we put in some photos from the history of the foundry. So if you kind of take a moment, some of, on some of the photos, you'll see, um, you know, former directors, former uh, visionaries that, you know, led to the, the genesis of the foundry. Uh, you'll also see some uh, scientific highlights, some instrumentation that um, kind of occurred along the way these past 10 years. Um, and uh, in addition to what you see in the, in the program, uh, you know, in the next few uh, hours of talks, uh, you, if you're, uh, if you, you may have seen as you kind of came in, there are uh, other, some of the other highlights and some of the other high points over the last 10 years have been commemorated in a recent issue of Advanced Materials that came out late last year uh, that is complimentary for all those who want to bring it back and, you know, put on their nightstand. Um, and so I hope you'll do that. Um, so really, uh, yeah, welcome. Um, now, uh, I want to just, I'm going to start with a few, you know, just very brief remarks and then I'm going to uh, go right to our program marks. I know you want to uh, get to, to Paul, um, and so one of the things I wanted to uh, particularly, you know, mention, uh, it's very, this is a, the foundry is really, uh, really kind of a very special place for me. Uh, so um, about 12 years ago, uh, the, uh, uh, I, yes, I'll have to point out who I am in this photo, uh, for the, uh, uh, but I, about 12 years ago, uh, several visionary uh, scientists at LBL, uh, the Foundry founders um, and their cohort uh, founded the Foundry um, with great amount of support from the Department of Energy and from Congress, including uh, the Honorable Mike Honda, who is here, um, and with some seed money hired a, a cohort of 12 postdocs uh, who um, in a jump start phase before the building was started, so this is circa 2000, 20, uh, 2003, um, kind of were charged with being on the ground and developing this notion uh, of, of, of the molecular foundry as a user facility. So, you know, the foundry is, it's a, uh, the molecular foundry, as many of you know, and maybe some of you don't, so it bears, you know, uh, some probably should take a step back and, and say something. Um, it's a national resource. It's a user facility for nanoscale science. It's a multidisciplinary user facility uh, where uh, people can come from all over the world, uh, from government lab, from academia, from industry, uh, and, uh, you know, through a competitive proposal process, uh, interact with our staff across physics, uh, chemistry, engineering, and biology, uh, and uh, and also use the, you know, state-of-the-art equipment that our building uh, is, you know, really uh, privileged to have and, uh, and develop. Uh, and so this is a, 
a little bit of, so this model is sort of familiar to those who use synchrotrons all over the world for, for many years. But at the time that the foundry was started, it was really unique and new for uh, nanoscience. Uh, and so basically what uh, the foundry, uh, as one of five na national nanoscale research centers funded by the Department of Energy have done, is really start a new model for research. And so as uh, these, uh, these 12 postdocs, along with um, their really um, you know, kind of uh, visionary mentors, uh, embarked on this journey together in, 20, in 2003 to uh, develop this model um, and, and, and realize it. And, uh, and so yeah, here they are. And so, uh, so maybe just it's worth pointing out that this is actually, this is me. Uh, so uh, uh, <laughs> that's right. Uh, and, um, and, then, uh, and then I think, in, and if you, if I just, you know, I, I don't have time to tell the story of each one of these folks, but it was just a really incredibly uh, diverse uh, and also um, a really outstanding group of people. And uh, many are, are I'm still in contact with. Um, a couple, um, as you, you might recognize, Paul Ashby and, and Shaw Ohlone are now on our staff as well as, as myself. So some of us just loved it so much we stuck around. Um, and so, uh, that's, that, so, so for me, this is a, a really a terrific moment to see you know, uh, this center, which started as a, as a group of postdocs with terrific mentorship, um, kind of evolved first into a building and now uh, what we have this center, this, this enormous center with, terrific, with amazing impact. Um, and I, I can't resist showing before I, uh, this photo. Uh, so this, is, uh, this was taken about a year before um, uh, the, 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 um, uh, the commemoration. Uh, on, and so this is uh, Stephen Louie, who's one of the founding founder directors. Uh, this is Paul Tagany, another uh, co-postdoc uh, that was, uh, and this is, uh, yes, this is me uh, again. And so we're, we're um, and so, you know, uh, and so we're, uh, we're a group of theorists. So, so even, so in those days, even the theorists had to wear uh, PPE uh, to uh, work in the foundry. Uh, um, and, uh, but, but this is, a, I, I think this is a special photo for me. Uh, and just, it's hard to believe, frankly, that, you know, this was only, you know, 11 years ago, but it's just flown by. Uh, and, um, um, you know, it's, uh, and, and here we are really uh, with some of our staff like myself, still around and, uh, and loving it and also, um, you know, and, and, and seeing it do as well as it has been is just uh, really uh, something really crazy, uh, very special for me and, and, uh, and important um, and, and terrific. Um, so uh, I, I want to, uh, um, I think what one maybe transitionary, uh, transitional comment I could make before we get into the program is that, um, you know, we did, you know, here, you know, the building came up, uh, you know, a year after this photo, uh, and, uh, uh, and so, you know, now fast forward 10 years, and I think it's really fair to say that we've built a lot more than just a building. Uh, we've uh, built a culture. Um, we have uh, built uh, and, and, and kind of built on, you know, sort of this space, a foundational sort of a new way of doing science, if you like, collaboratively, uh, um, basically helping people from the outside do things that they couldn't do in their individual, uh, in, the, in their individual labs as a single PI uh, and uh, across disciplines. And I think this model is, you know, something that, you know, we have played a big role, uh, the Foundry and the uh, NSRCs in general, in, um, in kind of proliferating. And right now, you know, you look at most programs uh, in the country, a lot of them funded by the Department of Energy and other, where, and other places, uh, their model is very similar. You know, there's a synthesis component, there's a component of doing theory and modeling, there's a component doing spectroscopy, et cetera, and imaging, and, you know, that's becoming a standard way of doing science, and at the time, uh, you know, the foundry, I think, was, was played a big role in, in, in really cementing that as, uh, as a high-impact way of, of doing science. So I look forward to, in this day, in this next, uh, you know, several hours, uh, you know, getting a glimpse into um, not just, you know, you know kind of uh, reminding ourselves what we've done, but also getting a glimpse into the future and how we can continue to build on that model uh, and working with you with my uh, construction hat on, perhaps, uh, to, to continue to work with you to do that. Now, um, I'm going to, before I introduce Paul, I, I do want to, tr uh, I do have a couple of messages from people uh, uh, in the community uh, that, and, uh, that, that couldn't be here. And I just want to 
take a few minutes to, to, to kind of uh, uh, pass along those messages. So one, so at the beginning uh, of the foundry, uh, um, you know, or, or maybe, uh, and Paul will probably elaborate, but maybe a little bit uh, post-beginning, uh, we, we, we kind of had these six, uh, I'm gonna try not to hit someone with the laser pointer, I, we had these six uh, founding scientific directors uh, who are uh, uh, featured on the wall here. And we're really lucky to have four of them in the room uh, right now. Um, and um, a fifth, Carolyn Bertozzi, became our second director after Paul in 2006 and was our director until 2010. And she couldn't be here, and so um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to play that, uh, and uh, I, I just wanted to introduce her. Uh, and so Carolyn, uh, in addition to being our founder director, our second founder director, was also uh, a professor of uh, chemistry at, at Berkeley. And uh, a couple of years ago, she left for for Stanford uh, and is now a professor of chemistry and biology there. And so uh, she couldn't be here. She has, she's you know, very busy organizing another event in San Francisco and wanted me to play the following message. So, uh, Carolyn Bertozzi. Hi, Molecular Foundry. Happy anniversary. I'm so sorry that I'm not there right now. And uh, I unfortunately hired Jeff Neaton about 10 years ago, not knowing that one day he would be the director of the Foundry and schedule the 10 year anniversary party on a day when I'm hosting a symposium in San Francisco. Oh well, you know, hindsight is 2020. But I'm so proud of everything the Foundry has accomplished and it was such an important experience for me in my life. I read the papers that are coming out and there's so many of them and I was uh, just checking online as the status of the user program and I see that the Foundry now has over 3,000 users which is fantastic. I mean, that is an incredible measure of impact and congratulations to everybody who's worked so hard for, for 10 years now. Uh, I'm thinking back to the early days and how much fun we had designing the building and, and thinking about how to create a culture uh, in which we achieved excellence in research and we're at the leading edge of technology development and at the same time uh, fulfilling such an important function for the nation and, and propelling nanoscience and democratizing nanoscience. That's the phrase we used to use uh, because when we started out, it was really hard actually for people in the research community to have access to the, the technologies and the know-how and, and the theoretical models. And, and 10 years later, boy, has that changed. And the Foundry played such an important role in that. So everyone, congratulations on so much success. I wish I was there, we'd be having such a good time. Uh, the Foundry really knew how to throw a good party uh, at those user meetings and at our DOE reviews, let's not forget those. Uh, so Jeff, keep up the great work and everybody, I'll see you soon, you know. I'm sorry that I moved to Stanford. <laughs> this is where I pause so you can boo and hiss and all of that. Um, but we'll be in touch, and I look forward to being a user myself, continually. Bye-bye. So I want to thank Carolyn for those words, and just note that she set this date because she uh, basically or, uh, set up the, the, the commemoration ceremony on March 24th, 06, so it's her fault uh, that this is uh, <laughs> on this date. Um, so one other uh, note I wanted to read. So today, um, unfortunately, we, so Pat Damer wanted to be here. And Pat Damer, um, at, the, at the last minute, had to, to cancel uh, due to uh, illness. Uh, and so I wanted to um, you know, uh, uh, read a couple of statements, one from Pat uh, and the other one uh, from uh, uh, George Maracas, who is our program manager at, uh, in the Basic Energy Sciences and Department of Energy. Uh, and so, uh, so basically from, uh, just from um, uh, Pat, um, and uh, excuse me while I find my, uh, my notes, um, uh, or perhaps let's start with, um, with uh, yeah, so Pat basically um, just said that she uh, was sorry that she couldn't be here that the Molecular Foundry continues as a leader in nanoscience and I couldn't be happier with the outcome. Um, and she was pleased that she played a small role in getting us started. And 
Uh, I argue, I think, you know, a lot of us would argue about the, the, the small part of she played a large role in, in getting us started. So, so we really thank you, Pat, and appreciate um, your uh, support over the years and your vision uh, and leadership. So thank you, Pat Damer. Um, and then finally, I wanted to read uh, a message from our uh, program manager at, uh, in Washington in, uh, in the basic energy sciences, Dr. George Maraca. So George was uh, um, uh, formerly also at the NSF in a, in a program manager role before he took over the uh, nanoscience centers in, in, in DOE. And then he was, uh, prior to that, he was in research both at Motorola and, and Arizona State University. And it, when he was holding those research positions, he was actually a reviewer of the uh, nano centers and what actually reviewed the foundry in, 20, in 2006. And he was uh, on some of the other nano centers scientific advisory committees. So he's very much familiar with these uh, and we're fortunate to have him uh, supporting us. And so uh, let me read um, a, a good fraction of his message. And so uh, this is a dear foundry. Um, I'm sending this because I cannot attend today, but I wanted to share my thoughts um, on my experience with the, nano, the, na, uh, the nanoscale uh, science research centers, the NSRCs, over the past 10 years as a user, as a committee member and reviewer, and now program manager. Once every so often, a really great idea is developed. In this case, um, in, the, in the case of the NSRCs, it was a BES's vision, starting with Pat Damer uh, and many others, that enabled an experiment uh, to determine whether this user facility concept could be could extended from synchrotrons to multidisciplinary collaborative uh, nanoscience. Uh, this facility would house unique state-of-the-art instrumentation and expert staff. The entire scientific community would have access to submitting their ideas uh, via short proposals and um, and through an externally peer-reviewed process, select the best ones. The winners, those PIs, uh, would be trained as users uh, and you know, nurtured, and their ideas, with the help of the staff and the equipment, would be accelerated through, toward proof of concept uh, capabilities for the scientific community. Um, and so this collaborative, this sort of uh, model, from this model, uh, started uh, this collaborative research culture that you know, permeates all of the nanoscience centers uh, where staff work together with users and publish in many cases jointly. Uh, in, this in this culture, I believe, um, pre uh, George believes, is the most precious thing that resulted. And just ask the users, he says. Um, and so during the formative years, Pat called the NSRCs her experiment, Pat Damer called the uh, NSRCs her experimental puppies and nurtured them along to where they are today. Uh, the experiment worked. Uh, Pat's puppies have matured into a strong team uh, doing collaborative science with significant scientific and translational impact, and I am proud to be part of this. Uh, best of luck with today's celebration, and I look forward to continuing to work with you uh, to make uh, you even more successful in your second decade, uh, George Maracas. So thank you, George, for your remarks. Uh, really appreciate your support.